you. I'm excited about our God. I'm excited about what he did in my life, how he turned it around. I put my feet on solid ground. Give him glory, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are new to Life Church, we love praising God. Amen. You go to sports games all over the world and you see people screaming and yelling. That's how we feel about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so glad that you chose to join us here today. We truly believe that God has something for you. This was not by accident, so please plug in and get what you need from God today. Amen. Why don't you take just a few minutes and greet each other if you're comfortable and tell them welcome to Life Church.
everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on, has God been good to anybody in this house? Can we take a moment and just brag on him? Who healed you? Who delivered you? Come on, who set you free? Woo, I think we ought to clap our hands and I think we ought to lift our voice. King of kings, Lord of lords, master of the universe, unchallenged, undisputed, number one champion. And you know what makes me the most excited about all of it? He knows my name. There's a lot of people fanning over celebrities that don't care and don't know anything about them. But my God calls me friend. Friend. As a matter of fact, I'm not as young and handsome as I used to be. And I'm losing a little bit of hair right up here in the crown. I, I get to look at these baptism photos. I'm going, what's that dot on the back of my head right there? I don't, but God loves me so much, he knows how many hairs I still have on my head. Amen. Have you thought about how much God is interested in you lately? If you will, you'll stop being depressed and lonely and come on and talk to me. You'll stop feeling down and... Your self-esteem will take a hike because the one that really matters knows your name, knows everything about you, thinks about you, plans for you, open doors for you. Hey, he loves me enough to answer prayers and not to answer other prayers. You think about that for a moment. Somebody should write a song about God's greatest gifts or unanswered prayers. Think about it for a moment. God loves you so much, he answers your prayers, and then there's other prayers you pray. God says, no, I know way better than you know. You're asking the wrong thing. I'm not going to answer that. And I'm going to let you get down the road. I'm going to let you look back and say, thank God he didn't answer that prayer. I pray that's how much God loves me. Look at your neighbor and shake their hand and say, Jesus loves you. Yes. Amen. So excited to be here. If you're a first-time guest, would you give them a hand? Thank you for coming out, worshiping with us. We appreciate you being here so very, very much. Amen. And I'm just going to take a moment here. This is what I love to do. I love to give out these certificates. We got two baptism certificates to give out today. Come on. He's a little bit shy, but come on, Marco. Come on up. Norma, come on up. I love it when children are baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, are you excited? You never know. This may be preachers. This may be a missionary. This may be a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, a teacher. Thank you, Jesus. Hell has not gotten all of our kids. Amen. We're very, very excited about that. Let me just make a, a, a couple of announcements and then I got to do something very special here. Uh, we, we want you to know that tonight at 6 p.m. and then the morning at 10 a.m. for all who can help us, we have been asked by the district to host the Section 1 Ministers Conference and that will be tomorrow night here at our church. And so we need to come in and make sure everything is spick and span and clean and ready for the, all the ministers to come in and their wives. And so tonight at 6 p.m., everyone say 6 p.m. And if you are currently unemployed, retired, or you have Mondays off or whatever, if you could join us at 10 a.m., we're going to be in here setting it up. Uh, we're going to be feeding them. Um, Brother uh, Armando, Sister Lorraine are going to be preparing those food. We know if we're putting our best foot forward. They're, they're going to wow them, we know, with food. That's going to be done tomorrow night. And so we're going to need help preparing the sanctuary, preparing the RW building, and also the cafe because we'll be splitting sessions and ministers' wives will be in our cafe as well. And so anybody that can help us, we appreciate your help tonight, 6 p.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning. Also, this is Easter week. Everyone say Easter week. 
Now, we have cards here that you can give out as invitations. There's two. This is a, 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 a decent-sized card you can pass out to friends, neighbors, put on someone's car window or door. And then we have the bite-sized ones. And so the bite-sized ones here are very small that you can just hand to somebody. It's got our scan code on the back. They can check out services and get information as well. And so they're going to be in the foyer today. We have several thousand, so we'd like for you to be sure and take some. I challenge everybody to invite at least three people to church this week. Everyone say three people. And the reason why I'm challenging you to do that is not just because we're in Ignite the Fire, and we appreciate all of the, the flames that have been coming from Ignite the Fire, but because Easter is the one Sunday a year where you have a very high chance of getting someone to attend church. If, if they have any inclination, any leaning towards Christianity, Easter is a great time to say, won't you come Resurrection Sunday and let's, let's find out what this celebration is really all about. And so if you have friends, cousins, neighbors, even the ones that keep you up all night that you've been praying that something happens to them or God moves them out, your enemies, people that have done you wrong, everybody, invite them this week to the house of God and who knows we know the building's going to be slam packed we're going to have to put out some more chairs here and lose some of our altar space that's fine uh, but we want everyone working this is our best chance Easter week so please on your way out of service today pick up the regular card or the bite side card and we would appreciate all that you're doing uh, to bring people into the house of the Lord now with at night the fire uh, this week is an open week, meaning it's no particular group's week. It's every group's week because of Easter. So we're all going to be working, and we know that there will be things coming up. We're going to be doing outreach on next Saturday. Our normal planned outreach at 9 a.m. Street Evangelism will be going on. And then at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, we'll be handing out flyers. So you can jump in on either one of those to help gather and to get people, get the word out. For all those people to come out and celebrate Resurrection Sunday right here with us at Life Church. And I'm just believing God's going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. Somebody's going to be baptized in Jesus' name. I'm telling what a great day to do it on. And so we're having evangelists will be with us. Evangelist uh, Caleb Herring will be with us. And so we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful Easter. We're so looking forward to that uh, as well. And also at this time, uh, we are finished up our life groups. How many of you enjoyed life groups this year? <laughs> wonderful time. It was a short one. It was only three Wednesdays because this month only offered four Wednesdays. And the last Wednesday, we always come back. But Life Groups will be starting back up in May. And so I wanted to take just a special moment to invite to the front all of our hosts. If you hosted a Life Group, we want you to come to the front. I want to give an appreciation to these wonderful people. And as they're making their way, we had eight different homes that were represented. wonderful folks opened up their houses and you were able to gather in now I say this at every life group uh, but it just bears repeating these wonderful people every single Wednesday clean their house before and after you left they opened up their home in the middle of the week when they've already worked for three days and knowing they had to get up the next morning and work they printed out flyers they put up with people who are easy to put up with and people who are not so easy to put up with. And they smiled the whole time as they did it. And you never knew that you were hard to be to put up with. So we want to say, won't you uh, help me join in saying thanks to these people. Give them a great big hand. I've got a little small token for you. This is a little token of appreciation. Amen. These wonderful people, they make, they make Life Church great. Would you give them one more hand of appreciation? They can be seated. You guys can make your way back to your seat at this time. 
And before the blue team comes, let me just also say we start Life Groups back up in May. If, if you uh, would like to open up your home to host a life group, we would so appreciate it because every time our groups are expanding, we like for our groups to expand, to, to go out. We like to go into new places, new areas, and it would give some of these other people who host all the time at least a month off break. So if you're interested, please see us after service. Let us know. God bless you all. Where's the blue team at? Make some noise, blue team. We had a great week this week. I was, let's take a look at where we're at. All right, 644,375 total. This week, 92,600. Good job, blue team. And I'll quickly mention just the top two from this week. Uh, there's several that haven't got back to me yet, but Brother Brent, top in the list with 35,475 points. And then Sister Dana, just right behind with 34,400 points. Great job. They actually totaled this week six, almost 70,000 points, just them two. So most of the points for this week. So again, good job, Blue Team. Let's give each other a hand, and let's continue to finish strong. Amen. God bless you. And turn your attention to the screen for a brief video announcement. Praise the Lord, everyone. We are so glad that you're here with us today. Here's our announcements for the week, so make sure to listen up. Sundays at 10 a.m. are Christian development classes. We have classes for all ages, like our kids, teens, young adults, and adults. Each class has an amazing curriculum to help you grow deeper in your relationship with God. Remember, Sunday at 10 a.m. This Monday, there will be no prayer or Bible study hosted at the church due to our sectional licensed ministers conference. So you have the night off, okay? This Wednesday, join us for our annual foot washing service here at the church. It is truly a powerful service and display of servanthood and community at the church. Please join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Can you believe Easter Sunday is next weekend? We are so excited and expecting a full house. Make sure to start inviting your friends, your family, and your coworkers, anybody else to Easter here at Life Church. If you would like to donate pre-filled Easter eggs for our Sunday school kids, we would be happily, happy to accept them. Thank you in advance. Revival is here. We will be having evangelist Caleb Herring with us for two weeks for Sunday morning and Monday evening. So start making plans to attend and bring a friend. That's March 31st through the April 1st and April 7th through April 8th. Be sure to connect with Life Church online on Facebook and Instagram and stay up to date with all of our upcoming events. Make sure to check in, like, and share our posts. That's all the announcements for this week, so let's get back to our service. God bless. Praise the Lord, Life Church. I said, Praise the Lord, Life Church. Amen. If you need a tithing or an offering envelope, please slip up your hand and one of our ushers will gladly wait on you. We also just wanted to say welcome again to all of our guests. I know it's been said, but we're so glad to have you here at Life Church. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be in the house of God today. Amen. If, if you're a first or a second time, or excuse me, if you're a first time guest, you should have received a welcome bag. And in that welcome bag is a little slip with a QR code on it. We want you to scan that so we can connect with you throughout the week and let you know what's going on at Life Church. Amen. Please also note any prayer requests that you may have. And then we'd like to get to know you after service. Uh, please join us in the Hebrews Cafe um, for a free snack and beverage of your choice. Amen. Say free beverage. <laughs> Amen. I just wanted to make sure you're paying attention. So again, first, time, first and second time guests, please join us in the Hebrews Cafe after service. Amen. Also, there is no kids church today. So the little kids get to stay in here with the big kids today. Amen. All right, if you could all stand, it is offering time at Life Church. Let's get excited to give back to God. Amen. God is doing incredible things at Life Church. We're building two churches, maybe three, maybe three churches based on our faith promise. We're so excited about what's going on. God is going to continue to move. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at our offering scripture. It comes from Leviticus 27 and 30. 
And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Everyone say holy. Amen. And let's take a look at our goal. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. That's 44%. My God, look at what came in on Sunday. Thank you so much for your faithful giving. Pastor always says, Life Church is a giving church. Amen. And God is just showing us over and over how good he is and how much he loves us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we lift you up today. We thank you, O oh God, for the givers, Lord God. Please bless their offering, O oh God. Multiply it, O oh God, in ways that they had not imagined, O oh God. Bless them in their relationships, in their finances, in their homes, in their workplaces. Give them raises and bonuses, checks in the mail, O oh God. Things, hallelujah, that give you glory, O oh God. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for what you're doing at Life Church, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why don't you come out from your seat and bring God his tithe and your offering? as we worship our God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you thankful that you can go directly to the King of Kings, amen, and tell him what you need? Hallelujah. He's here right now. So let's, let's focus on God. Thank you, Jesus. Move in this house, God. Have your peace. Jesus is in this room. Making this place a sin, holy ground, holy ground. Oh, we're standing on holy ground in the presence of your majesty. Your spirit.
everybody go into the throne room. The veil is torn, the doors swing wide. I see glory as I run inside the throne room before you.
Come on, lift your hands all over the building right now. Come on, left, right, front to back. Every hand raised. Every voice lifted. Jesus is here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you'll stand to your feet, let's open our Bibles to the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. And we're going to begin at verse number 7. And this is our communion Sunday. And as you know, uh, it's our normal habit and tradition. Usually Sundays I'm up here and I am uh, 100 miles an hour and preaching with passion and fervor. And, and um, I'm not going to guarantee that's not going to happen, but usually that's what a Sunday is. And then Wednesday nights we kind of slow down and we teach a little bit. Uh, but for Communion Sunday, I always kind of slow down a little bit because I want us to fully understand what we're going to be partaking in in just a little while. And many of you, you may have come from religions, backgrounds where you took communion often to where it was, um, you never even thought about it. You just ate a wafer and drank some juice. But it's my assignment here today that at the end of this service, when those wafers go out, and that little juice cup is put forth, that you have a revelation given to you, an understanding of what we're doing and while we're doing it. So we're going to go to the book of Luke, 22nd chapter. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 7. And I'm going to read a lengthy passage. And then we're going to get into the word of the Lord. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where will that we prepare? He said unto them, Behold, when you're entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say to the goodman of the house, the master say unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which was given for you. This do ye. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. I want to just take a moment and have us pray, and then we're going to get into this wonderful topic of communion. Jesus, we thank you for what we feel in this house. Father, we ask you move among us touch us today. Open our understandings, Lord. Give us revelation. Speak to us. I pray you anoint me as I teach and preach your word today. And I pray you anoint the minds, heart, and ears of every man, woman, and child in this building and those watching online. God, I pray right now, do a divine work in this place. 
We've gathered together to thank you for what you have done for us and to give you glory and to never forget it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Put your hands together all over the building one more time. One more time, would you just lift your voice and let's just thank him all over the house. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated today in the presence of the Lord. When a man or a woman comes to the end of their life, what is truly a priority to them will be revealed or made manifest. Something about knowing the end is near, that what is really important is what we focus on. This will even help you understand maybe people or even parents who weren't good who as death came, they wanted to be around their children who maybe they even neglected. This will help you understand that when a person sees the end, what's truly important is manifest and been, is revealed. So when Jesus comes to the final days that he is going to be with us in the flesh, everything he does is of extreme importance. The moment he rides into Jerusalem and they are waving the palm branches, and this is Palm Sunday today, they wave the palm branches, proclaiming, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest, giving Jesus his grand entrance into Jerusalem. Now, it's not our subject matter today, but it needs to be stated that if you want Jesus to come into your situation, the best way is to get your palms out. Start praising him. So he comes into Jerusalem as they're waving palms. And he makes his grand entrance. And the first stop, he goes straight to the temple. He walks into the temple and sees people selling doves and anger comes on him because he's only got a few days left here and he starts overthrowing tables and he starts getting angry some one of the times he grabbed a whip and began popping it and I, I know that the picture of Jesus that you've seen painted looks like a very meek and mild man but the carpenter came out in him on that day and he began driving folks out, telling them this is supposed to be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And he was trying to bring the importance, the seriousness, if you will, to what happens at the house of God. Now, let me just pause and say, I'm not saying we can't have a good time at church and you can't laugh. And that's not what I'm saying. But I, what I am saying is when we come to this house, we come with a purpose. We are doing something serious. Otherwise, it becomes a religious thing. So Jesus, on his first time off, the, off of the donkey, rides in, goes to the temple, drives them out. Then he tells his disciples, the Passover's coming. And we need to celebrate it together. He then tells them, this is where. Tells them when you come into the city, you're going to see a man carrying a water pot. Follow him. When he goes into the house, ask for the owner of the home. And ask the owner, where is the room that's prepared for Jesus and his disciples to celebrate Passover? And he will show you an upper room. So they go and they do it. And just like Jesus said, it happens. When Jesus gets to the upper room, keep in mind, this is the final dinner he's going to have with his disciples. This is the last time he's going to eat before his passion. Or as we read here today, he said, 
before I suffer. This is his last moment. So it's very important. If you're going to take any place to study in the Bible, I would always look at this last moment right here. This last supper is so full of powerful truths because it's the last things Jesus is saying to them at this dinner. And in this dinner, he says, we're here tonight for a reason. Now, we have to back up and go back hundreds of years to know why this was such a serious moment and why every year these Jewish people would celebrate it, would not miss it, would even consider it a sin if you missed it. So let's take a journey back. We're going to go back all the way to Egypt where the Israel nation is in bondage. They are slaves to Egypt. 430 years, that's many generations, slavery, all they knew. Egypt would beat them down. They cried for deliverance. And the time comes where God says, it's time your deliverance is coming. Oh, what a wonderful fault that was. Do you remember when you cried out and God said, it's time for your deliverance to come. So God talks to Moses through a burning bush and says, here's your assignment. I'm sending you into Egypt. And I'm going to empower you. My hand's going to be upon you. And I want you to deliver my people out of the hand of Pharaoh. Moses would be empowered to do notable miracles. Plagues would come. And these plagues would devastate Egypt. But Pharaoh would not let God's people go. Culminating to the final plague where God said the last plague that's going to happen is the firstborn is going to die in every household unless they follow the plan I'm going to give you. See, God always gives us a plan to escape destruction with. So God tells them very specifically this is the plan because when the death angel passes over the city, he's going to visit every home unless you follow this, this plan. Here it is. He says every household has to get a perfect lamb. It cannot have any blemish on it. Now, I want you to, in your mind, think along with me as I try my best to describe this and draw a picture for you. As a man goes out to find the perfect lamb, it cannot have any blemish. It can't have one colored eye and another different color eye. It can't have any blotches on it. It can't, have, uh, it can't be limp. There, there can't be any blemish to it, it has to be perfect. Do you think for a moment that that man haphazardly just ran out somewhere and grabbed the first one he could find? Absolutely not. No, because it was serious. Because his salvation and his children's salvation rested on the perfect lamb. So it was a serious thing. He wasn't trying to gather a lamb and at the same time watching TikTok videos. It was too serious for that. He wasn't joking around and playing around. It was too No, he had to examine that lamb because salvation is serious. I am amazed at the amount of people who does not take salvation seriously. Come on, talk to me. 
it blows my mind at how many people just kind of, oh, well, we'll just do church when we get a chance on it. No, my salvation, my family's salvation is too serious for me to just haphazardly say, oh, well, we may go to church or we, we may do something. No, no. The reason I teach my children how serious it is, is is because I don't want them to miss it. I want them to understand salvation comes through this plan. The reason you're here today is you're taking it serious. That's why you're in the house of God. So he had to, he had to with very seriousness, examine the lamb to make sure. And he probably didn't examine it once. It, it, it was probably checked over and over. Because before we come home and present this, we've got to make sure it matches the specifications that God told us through Moses. That lamb would be brought home. They would take the blood of that lamb and they would mark it on the doorpost of the house. This would be a symbol, be symbolic, that it would cover the entire house by just covering the door. A lot of, and there's so much typology here that we'll hit in just a little bit because we know who proclaimed, I am the door. But they put that blood all around the doorpost there to symbolically cover the house. Then they brought that lamb inside. They could not break a single bone of the lamb. Remember, it had to have no blemishes. They cooked the lamb. They ate the lamb. If there was too much and there was leftovers, you couldn't leave it. You had to go to your neighbor and say, we have some leftovers. It's got to be ingested. Somebody's got to eat it. We can't leave it out. It's too serious. It's too important to what we're doing. So every family put that door, put that blood around the door. And they ingested that lamb. They also had to be dressed and ready. Because in a moment, God was going to say, it's time for you to get out. You're coming out of Egypt. Ooh, I, I'm ready for that day. We call it the rapture is what we call it. That's why I'm ready. Because I don't know when he's going to call, but when he does, I got to go when he calls. <clears throat> That's why I'm serious about my salvation. So they were dressed. And that night, as they were in their house, the angel of death moved through Egypt. And the firstborn of every household that didn't have blood on the doorpost and lamb in their belly, the firstborn died. But to the ones that had blood on the door and lamb in the belly, the angel of death passed over their house and that is why for generation after generation they were commanded don't forget what God has done for us and they celebrated Passover every year to remind themselves of the night the angel of death passed over our people's homes and we came out and God brought us into a land promised to us. So, bring that ahead a few thousand years to our text. As Jesus has been walking with the disciples for three and a half years. Now he comes to a point where he's going to give them great revelation where they're going to learn why they've been doing this their whole lives. And while their parents and their parents' parents and the previous generation every year were commanded to remember. Because if we're not careful, the things of God can become so mundane to us that we lose the seriousness of what we're doing. And the reason I take a Sunday to teach this and to, and to talk about the way we do is because in a moment when we take 
communion. It's not going to be something we're just going through some religious motion. We're not just going to go through just something to say, hey, we went to church and had communion. You're going to know why we had communion. You're going to have revelation. Some of you may be for the first time that you're going to understand what really happened. So Jesus begins teaching them. He takes that bread and he breaks it. And he says, this is my body. Now, I want to just stop here because he wasn't meaning it literally. There are some people who get out into crazy doctrines where they think when you take communion, you're actually eating the flesh of Jesus. No, you're missing the greater point. He said, this wine is my blood. You're not literally drinking the blood of Jesus. Missing the greater point. What he's teaching was, I am the lamb that you are supposed to remember. That when you think back to what Moses did, I too am the perfect lamb. There was a reason why Jesus never committed sin because he didn't have any blemishes. There was a reason why no bone was broke on his body. He could have no blemishes. Because when he was presented as the perfect lamb. See, we're about to come to Resurrection Sunday where we're going to really focus on it. But as we build up, I want this whole week to be in your mind that you remember what the Lord did for you 2,000 years ago. I think it ought to be in our hearts. Jesus, I'll never forget what you did for me. I, I, I like having family over. I like eating uh, uh, eggs and I like, I like having food, all kind of thing. But the reason for this season is 2,000 years ago, the perfect lamb without blemish was offered from my household to be saved. I think we ought to put our hands together and clap for the Lord in this house. Come on, it's not just a religious holiday. No, we've come together to remember whose blood was shed, whose back was beaten. So when we eat this wafer in a few moments, we're not just eating some bland cracker. We're remembering what Jesus did for us. Now, I want to take you back 2,000 years ago. Isaiah prophesied it this way. Prophesied about the Messiah. Isaiah 53, verse number 2. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Isaiah was saying this, that when Jesus comes to the spotlight of the reason he was planned, the reason he was born, his mission, his purpose, when he hits the spotlight, he's not going to be like a celebrity. You're not going to think he's handsome. You're not going to be blown away at his looks. He's not going to be anything to look upon. And I'll show you why. I have a picture. Flash that picture up for us. When Jesus comes to his spotlight, this is what he's going to look like. No form or comeliness. You're not going to say he's handsome. You're not going to be attracted to what it looks like. Leave the picture up. The next verse says he is despised and rejected of man. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. Notice, and we hid as it were our faces for him, from him. He was despised. We esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. 
and yet we did a stream him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let me just pause there. Aren't you thankful for what Jesus has done for you? Jesus, I'll never forget. What you've done for me. I don't know what kind of sin you had in your life. But I had plenty of it. And my Savior. Suffered. For me. My Savior. Shed blood. For me. My Savior endured pain. Endured the cross. Endured mockings. Endured shame. They beat him. They slapped him. They placed a crown of thorns on his head and smashed it into his skull. And he did it for my sin, not for his sin. He was perfect. It was from my household. It was from my house to be cleaned, where my house could be salvaged and saved. I think I'll take a moment and just thank him right now. I think from the bottom of your heart, From the bottom of your heart, begin to thank him. <laughs> Wounded for my transgression. Bruised for my iniquities. He bore my griefs. He carried my sorrow. Endured rejection. I think you ought to raise your hands all over this house. Remember. Somebody remember. I'll never forget what you've done. times I said I'll never do it again Lord and I fail yet he still loved me and for all the sins that nobody knows about he yet he loved me Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. The perfect Lamb of God. Beaten to where I hid my face from Him. Beaten beyond recognition. And he did it for me. Oh. Oh. Did it for me. It's not a person in this house that he didn't do that for. He loves everybody in this house. 
He died for your sin. So again, in just a few moments, when we take communion, it's not just some religious thing that we're doing. It's not just going through the motions. We're not just trying to get through this service so we can go eat somewhere. We're going to remember. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with its stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. Never forget, without the grace of God, you're a sinner that's bound for eternal damnation. But because of what he did on Calvary, forgiveness is available to us. The only reason repentance works is because of what he did on Calvary. The only reason baptism works is because of what he did on Calvary. We've all gone astray. You were born in sin. There's nobody perfect. We've all gone astray. And the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to slaughter. As a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. What Jesus did on Calvary was show everybody what Moses taught you, I'm the fulfillment of it. I've come to fulfill the law and the prophets. I'm the culmination of it. I am the last time there is to ever be a sacrifice. My blood will do the work until the end of time. The perfect sacrifice. So when we eat a wafer, we're not just eating a wafer, we're remembering. And when we drink the juice, we're not just drinking some juice. Hebrews 9, verse 12, and I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. I like the way it flows. Hebrews 9, 12 through 15. Once for all time, he took the blood into the most holy place. But not the blood of goats and calves. He took his own blood. And with it, he secured our salvation forever. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a young cow could cleanse people's body from ritual defilement. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our hearts from the deeds that lead to death so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. That is why he is the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people. And so that all who are invited can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they have committed under that first covenant. Again, 
when we drink the juice, we're not just drinking juice. We are remembering the blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. Keep your attention on me. If When they get to your road, focus on them. But everyone, listen up here. I don't want to lose you here. They're passing out stuff right now. This again, at the point of being redundant, is the reason why we take it so seriously. And we teach it the way we do. It's because it's a moment where we come together and we examine ourselves. We look at our lives and we say, does our life thank him for what he's done? Do my decisions reflect my thankfulness? Does my lifestyle reflect my thankfulness? Does the way I conduct myself, does it reflect my thankfulness of what he did on Calvary 2,000 years ago? Now, in just a few moments, we're going to take communion. But before we do, we're going to have this moment of reflection. Because there is a danger in taking communion. Unworthily, the Bible calls it. It's a serious moment. We don't want you just to take it because you're in the house. You have to take it with revelation and understanding. You have to examine your heart. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Verse number 20. You can put the scripture up on the screen. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before his own supper. One is hungry and another one's drunken. Paul says, what? Have you not houses to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which was also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, The cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Of me, For as often as ye eat the bread and drink this cup, ye do show that the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine Himself. Everyone say examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. Notice eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you. And many are asleep. That means they're dead. So we want to take a moment right now. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. And examine our lives. Let's do some self-examination. God, if there's anything in my heart that's not pleasing to you, I repent of it. I got to get my heart right. Lord, forgive me of any sin. God, forgive me of the things I know I did. God, forgive me for stuff I may have missed and didn't even realize I did wrong. Every man, every woman, begin to look in your life right now. Examine yourself. If there's anything unpleasing to you, I repent. I think we ought to all just repent to cover it all in this house. I think front to back, left to right, as we examine ourselves, Lord, forgive us. But again, don't just say it. We're remembering what he did for us. I gotta be right. Make my
my heart right, Lord. I got to be pleasing in your sight. I want to be pleasing to you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand all over the house right now. Let's continue to pray here for a moment. Just begin to pray. Lift your voice all over the building. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we thank you. Make my heart clean, Lord. Make my heart right, Lord. Let your blood cleanse me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me of my rebellion. Forgive me of my bad attitude. Forgive me of my secret sins. Forgive me, Lord. I remember what you did. I remember what you did. I remember. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. At this time, go ahead and open the top part there. Again, this is not just a wafer. This is not just a cracker. This is us remembering. Put that picture back up. It's us remembering the body, the pain he suffered. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which was broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after this same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can open that cup. And with your free hand, why don't you just raise it to heaven right now? Let's begin to thank him all over the house. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. I thank you, Lord. Nothing compares to him. What a beautiful name. Come on, let's just worship him the all over this house. A Savior. What a beautiful name. Let's just begin to worship him. What a beautiful name it is. Jesus, I'll never the forget, name Lord. Of Jesus, the price Christ you paid for me 2,000 years ago. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing
nothing compares to this. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of I invite Jesus. you to step out. I invite you to come to the front. I know you can feel him where you're sitting, but come all the way down. There's something about moving towards the front. That outward sign. You silence the bones. In the name of Jesus. Come on, don't come alone. Come all the way down so you can so the lanes won't be clogged. Come down close as you can. The praise of your glory. For you are Come on. Come on down. Yours is the kingdom, and yours Come on, we've come to remember. Glory. This is yours my moment is of remembrance. Of come on, come on, come on down. What a powerful name. Come on down to so the lane, open up. Come on. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name. Open. Come on down. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. Yes, we remember. The name of Jesus yes, we remember. Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Jesus, I'll never forget. Nothing can stand Beautiful name it is. What a 
beautiful day. It's a serious business.